real treat for you today because uh, fresh off an outstanding performance at B.B. King's Blues Club in Times Square's premier joint in Manhattan right in Times Square. He tore the house, he tore the roof off that house Friday night, right? That's Friday night. Yeah, that voice, we wanted to have him in studio and he's here today. He's going to perform in a little while. Mr. Julian Stefani. How are you doing, Julian? I'm doing funky fantastic. I pronounced your your last name right? Stefani. That there is you correct. Go, you got it. And uh, you know him also, Julian's Ride. Yes. And uh, the Prince Erotic City tribute show. Going real well, right? Oh, it's going great, man. Yeah. Tell, tell us about uh, Friday night. And uh, first of all, um, your band, who, who was playing with you on stage? Uh, for the Erotic City band, I have... Um, Charles Santos on drums. I got uh, Barry Hampton on bass, Craig Stevenson on keyboards, and myself. We okay, got a, we got a four piece, you know, and we sound like there's eight of us up there when we're when we're playing. Wow! You know, I jump on and off guitar and keys and singing and everything. And uh, Craig Stevenson, he's 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 an old school cat. He's totally into the um, uh, Parliament funkadelic. Oh yeah, kind of you know thing. You know, he's multifaceted on the keys. You know, he sounds like an octopus. He's got so many things going on at once you would never know he was doing all of that stuff up there <laughs> yeah so uh, tell the bb king yeah the BB, yeah. yeah the bb king show was kind of it was it, it was a fun show you know there was an, a group that went on before it's called indian ocean they play like uh -huh. indian indian music and they had a full crowd and a lot of them stayed for our show you know we went on late at about 11 p.m and those fans were were hot bothered and ready right know? right they, they came in ready for our show man so we had we had a good crowd mm -hmm. you know and um, we gave them one of the rawest type of, you know, Prince tribute shows I think they haven't seen in a while. You know, it was a lot. I think the the guy in Vegas, Jason, who does Purple Rain, is, is a lot more clean, polished. Right, you right. Know, and we're more, a little bit more raw. I take the songs and I kind of put a big twist into them. You yeah. Know? Instead of trying to play them like the record and trying right, to get everything right. so detailed, I just try to take the essence of yeah. the song and then, then, then kind of right. like make it my own because you know? you're a musician and you're all right with your own music your own records and so i'm sure you you, you put yeah. a little julian right in into prince you know the, the songs oh, we yeah. all know and love oh yeah we, well, yeah we do like get off i went into this I, I i break it down and say you know on the one and then we go into this jazz piece and, uh -huh, then, we, and then we right. bring back this monster funk vamp and everybody but just like that's not that's not how the record goes i'm like right, right. <laughs> i'm like it's not supposed to go like that you know so so when did you first decide to to put together the erotic city prince tribute and and to to, to get into a full scale prince i got tired of show. people saying you look like prince right you know, right walking right. the streets and people be like hey man anybody ever told you you look like prince i'm like no, I think he looks like me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it just got to a point where I started incorporating the songs in my original band shows. You right, know, right. And I started seeing a different reaction in people, uh -huh, you know, where right. people were li really digging it. And then I just seen there was an outlet just to utilize it, you know. Right, right. I mean, there, it was a time when I really didn't want to do it at all. But I figured, I'm like, you know, I appreciate all forms of music, especially his, you know, so... It just got to a point where I'm like, hmm, let me just try doing a tribute show here and there, and it just kind of just took off. Now, how, how about from Prince himself? Has he ever been on the audience for, for a tribute show that you've done, or what, any I, any uh, feelers from him I, on his tribute? You know? No, I've never seen him come attend any of my shows, right, but it right. was, there was one time I, I seen him in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and this was at the, uh, I forgot the name of the theater, but it was an after-set party at the Tom Tom Club. Right, right. And... I had my Walkman on with my music on there, mm -hmm. and we were sitting there talking. I G was in, sitting in front of me, and I had a chance to talk to French for like I don't know five minutes. Right, right. He was asking me what was I listening to. I said I'm listening to my music. Uh -huh. I said you want to check it out. So I gave him the I gave him the headphones, right. and he's he's listening to it. He goes, Hey man, this is really good. Oh yeah. And then yeah, security right. kind of like looked at him and said, Hey, they they, they got to go. Right, so, right. So he got up and, and took off with my Walkman. <laughs> 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 That's the last I see my walk. I didn't even realize until like. It was time to go. I was like, wait a minute. Right, right. Oh, <laughs> he's, so got he's got my got, music. Yeah, he's got your music, right? I, yeah. said, he, I said, yeah, I better not hear that stuff on his next CD. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because uh, you never know, right? No, yeah. but he did yeah. tell me, you know, he did make a couple of comments and say, hey, you got, you're got, you really talented. You know, keep doing what you're doing. And right. I've heard that from all the other musicians like Kurt Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, Sonny T, um, 
Kit Blackshire, um, right. um, Morris Hayes, you know, they were all very supportive of what I was doing. They never see me do the Prince Tribute show. Even when I was in Minneapolis, I never did the Prince Tribute thing out there at all. I was always focusing on my own thing. Right. So, if anything, that's what I wanted them to see mostly. You right, know, If right. anything, if they were going to see it, I'm like, I want these cats to see what I can do. Yeah, yeah, because you, you definitely a great performer and songwriter, multi-instrumental producer. You, you do it all. Yeah. And, and uh, a promoter of uh, concerts. And, yeah, we'll yeah. talk a little bit about that great stuff you got coming up. But uh, why don't you give the websites people can come check you out right now. To the websites? Yeah. Uh, if they're on MySpace, you can go and see me at Julian's Ride on MySpace. And uh, if you're looking up on Facebook, you can just go look up my name, Julian Stefani, on Facebook. Okay. You can go right there and, and check you out. Yeah, there's videos. There's, you know, I try to post the dates up. It's kind of weird. Facebook doesn't let you post, like, MySpace where you can leave it up there. And right. And that's the first thing you see. Everything kind of scrolls down. So I kind of got it in the, in the photo section. So how about for musicians? I mean, MySpace was, was the spot, you know, other than your own websites, but... um. It's kind of taking a back seat or still still going strong? I got my own. Well, I've, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to announce. I do have juliansride.com also. Okay. So yeah. people can actually go to an actual website. And MySpace, yeah, when it first came out, it was it was the big thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then all of a sudden, Facebook came in and made it more personal. Mm -hmm. You know, and MySpace is like, I still got a lot of people that hit me up on MySpace as right. far as concert dates and all that kind of stuff. But it's it's a little different. Right. It's right. not like what it was when it first came out, I see. You know, there's almost too much to keep. I, I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up with everything. I mean, yeah, I, got, yeah. I get spam. I, I open up my mail and I got a zillion yeah, emails yeah. from people I don't even know. I'm like, who are these people? They're all promoting their music and yeah. CDs. And I'm like, videos. I'm the biggest distribution of uh, hip hop and R&B music. I never signed up. I mean, I'm getting like, you know, like some of the biggest artists to, to download the MP3s. I'm like, where did this come from? I never even made an attempt. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I did notice like I'm trying to target like avenues that will probably really work like mm -hmm. youtube you right. know, a lot of people are visual they want to see things yeah got, yeah right if you got live concert footage or any kind of footage that they can visually see you as as a new artist it really helps out and you can actually deck out a youtube page just like a myspace page right you know, oh you, okay you can kind of like configure it a little bit you know yeah. and put stuff and post things and people can go there and actually take your videos and link them up you know so it kind of works. Yeah. I've seen a lot of artists actually right. break through through more through YouTube than the actual MySpace or Facebook. So that is the voice of Mr. Julian Stefani and uh, Julian's Ride, Total Freedom. We're going to play some tracks from this. You know, we were talking about slapback and everything. You know, when I want to go for a long car ride, it's Julian's Ride. It's the time. It's Prince, Cameo, um, you know, mm -hmm. P-Funk and, and slapback because I can listen to the whole CD and, you know. That's funny you say that. I jump a around. A lot of people that bought my CD, they always say, man, it never left my CD player in the car. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a great CD, and we're going to be playing more music from right now, A Land of a Thousand Dances. And uh, we'll come back and kick in more right here on The Up Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. Julian Stefani is right here. Joe Kelly, here it is. All right. Originally recorded back in, written back in 1986. That is Julian Zarai. Julian Stefani is here. And, uh, yeah, you you've been uh, toying with that and thinking about re-recording it for a future project. Yeah, I put that song out. I wrote it in '86, and then um, I revamped it a few years. I released it on my first CD, which was called Eargasm in 1999. Uh -huh. That was back when uh, you remember MP3.com. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was yeah. the big music site over MySpace and all that other stuff. And believe it or not, when I released that album. I was getting more hits off that CD than Fishbone and a lot of other big national bands at the time. Right, right. And all these big reviews from uh, England and Tokyo. You know, I was doing pretty good with c CD sales and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, that song, w it, it goes way back. And then I revamped it a few times, you know. And everybody who listens to it, they think I just wrote it, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't realize like that song goes way back to, yeah. you know, Purple Rain days. Because, <laughs> you know... We're, we're always saying this, but, you know, songs like that you can't, like, say, oh, that was out of that era. Just some great songs in, you know, 86, and it's still sounding fresh in 2010. And yeah, yeah. 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 So look, Julian's with us. Julian's Rod, Julian Stefani, the Prince uh, Erotic City tribute show. Um, let's talk about um, going back, your musical upbringing. Where did you grow up? 
I grew up in Chicago. Okay. On the south side of Chicago, and I'm I'm the only musical person in my family. I got, oh yeah. Yeah, I got two sisters, and right. they were non musical. <laughs> so so how how did you get into music? Listening to radio and, and yeah, my my older sister she used to listen to uh, it was like it was like a religion. Every Saturday she would watch American Bandstand, yeah, Soul Train, yeah. all yeah. that stuff. And I was too busy doing other stuff, but then I kept watching it. Then I, I caught a glimpse of the Jacksons and James Brown and all of yeah. that stuff. And then uh, my mom used to host these parties. So we're, we're at a party, and they're playing James Brown music, and I see this little kid. He's dancing on stage. And I uh, knew this James Brown dancing. It was like right. the, the, the camel toe and all of that right. kind of stuff, yeah. right? So I jump on stage. I'm trying to show this kid how to do the dance moves. Uh-huh. And I ended up doing the splits and all of that stuff. And then I got a standing ovation. All these people were clapping. And that's the right. first time I felt like, wow. I'm yeah. putting I'm putting a big wheel away. I'm putting all the right. I'm putting all the toys away. I'm going to be a musician. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think at about five years old, I, I had my mom buy me a, a guitar and stuff like that, and I started playing Chuck Berry records and stuff like that, and just right. It's it, it, that's been my love ever since. Yeah, Chuck Berry doesn't have a band; just shows up in town, <laughs> and they got a hired band. Yeah, yeah they better did. know the tunes. Yeah, he just hires them, you know. So when I yeah, when I was growing up, it was always like. I was looking at people like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, you know, uh, Cab Galloway, all these people who had like this strong stage presence. You know, right, James right. Brown, Sly Stone. I was growing up watching this, and then I, I, I took off from that going into like rock bands. I, I, I snuck out at ten years old. I went to a Kiss concert, uh-huh. and then I started yeah. seeing all these big rock and roll shows. You know, and that took me to a whole nother yeah, avenue right, of music. Right. You know, and so I kind of just got really diverse with it. You know, with music. You know, growing up. Um, playing funk, Pablo, rock, you, you played blues. lefty, lefty yeah. guitar. Yeah, um, I played lefty. Hendrix influence at all? Yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was. I wasn't too deep into Hendrix right. in my earlier career. I, I started appreciating his music later. Right, right. But, you know, I think when I was younger, I was looking at it like this guy's way out. I yeah, can't, yeah. I can't figure it and out. He only <laughs> recorded uh, with like three, three or four records before he died, or and then. Yeah, he, no, I think he recorded more. He had like four years of his career, but he recorded, I think. Quite a few albums, probably about five or six or something. Wow! But yeah, when I was growing up, I think his musical style was just way. I was, I guess, I was trying to play something that was more compatible to what I was growing up listening to. Right. You know, fun, funky rock and roll stuff, and his stuff was like you yeah. had to be on a rocket ship to catch up with him. I know Jelly Bean Johnson, a friend of yours. He's also a, a big Jimi Hendrix fan. He was telling me you walk in his house, there's Jimi Hendrix doormats. He probably sleeps in Jimi Hendrix uh, bed sheets, and yeah, you know, he's a big collector of guitars. Yeah. That's how I am now. You know, oh yeah, yeah. If you go to my house, I got tons of Jimi Hendrix stuff everywhere. Yeah, you know. But I think when I was in my teens and early twenties, then I started getting into Hendrix. A yeah, lot more, right. A lot more where I've already figured out how to play the guitar a lot better. Mm-hmm. Then I can appreciate. Wow, this is what he was really doing. You yeah. know, as an innovative guitar player. Yep. You know, and the sounds he created, it was just so different. And by me being left-handed, I was like, hey, yeah, means, yeah, yeah. they got something in common. <laughs> right. So uh, Julian's got a busy schedule. So how about hipping our audience, um, if they're listening on the live broadcast or the re-airing out, Baroom and Joe Kelly.com, about some, some dates. Where are you going to be playing? Uh, right now I'm in Hartford with you. We just got done with New York. When I get back, um, we're going to be doing a show. Um, i got about a whole bunch of shows in Oregon. I'm going to be playing in right. Eugene on September 18th at a club called Diablos. And then after that, I'll be back in Portland with a couple of shows. Um, Lake Oswego, a place called Gemini's. And then the Thirsty Line in Portland. Then we go to Washington and play in um, Clearwater Casino. Right. There's a club out there called Winterland. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, a lot of the shows are going to be in the West Coast for a while. Right, right. And we'll, and we'll talk more about... Uh how you arrived in in the uh, Portland area, and also, uh, you know, your Minneapolis days. You were out there a few years, so. Uh, oh yeah. And, and also a big, big uh, tour in the making with some great musicians as well. Julian's putting together, and uh, we're gonna play something from Total Freedom. Where are you going? Where are you going? This is another nice one here, and uh, you're listening to WVOF eighty-eight point five in Fairfield, Connecticut. Julian Stefani is with us, and thanks. For all right, that is our special guest, Julian Stefani, Julian's Ride. And, uh, wow, where are you going, right? Where are you going where now? Where are you going, yeah. So, so B.B. King's, man, a lot of people want to play B.B. King's, and you're on stage, front and center, mm-hmm. the house, people going crazy. And 
we were talking off air about the outfits, the you know Prince related outfits. How tough is it to find the outfits? I mean, I mean, you know, I don't really find them. I get them made. I'll just look at something that he wore or something that even resembles close to right. a certain style. Right. And I just, you know, I just get it made. It's not like I can f- actually find that stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, there's a, there's a, I've been fortunate to run into some people in, in, in Portland now where I can just show them a picture of it and right. bring them the, the fabric and the material and they can make it exactly how I need it to look and fit. Now, and Prince, Prince with the high heels, you don't need the high heels, right? I wear the high heels. I don't, oh, wear, really? I don't wear as high heels as he does. Right, right, you know, right. I, I think he wears like three and a half or four inch heels. Yeah, I, right. I, I keep mine in the three, <laughs> three <laughs> inches. I try, to, I try the four inches before. They can get to you after a while. Yeah, yeah. And, and Prince no longer doing the splits himself. So Yeah, I, yeah. I, I do them occasionally. Right, I right. I don't do them too much. Yeah, but the outfits, yeah. I, I try to go... I, I try to keep the early Prince look, you right, know, like right. I said, between that Purple Rain era, 80, You don't do the Dirty Mind look? No. No, no. I did that once, and it got a little out of hand. You know, right, right. Fans were just like, wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, I, I right. try to go with the more classier Purple Rain kind of yeah. attire. Yeah, there's a picture I saw when, you, you know, and, and actually it's on here. This is yeah. like spot on, yeah. Yeah. Right. So when I do that, I, I try to keep it in there, you know, because that way people recognize it right away. If I do anything like the way he looks now or anything, people, some people don't get it. They'll be like, I remember Prince when he had this look. You yeah, know? yeah, right. The typhoon, big hairdo, ruffle shirts and all that kind of stuff. Right, know? right. So uh, you got some dates with the Erotic City tribute coming up probably, right? Yeah, I got a, I got a few dates. I, right. I try not to book that too much. You right. know, it was, it's more of a fun thing I just do on the side. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, right. I'm more focused on my J-Ride thing and stuff. You know? right. A lot of people used to think the J-Ride was the Prince thing. I'm like, no, it's two separate yeah yeah right things and stuff like that right and then you know some people would say well why do you waste your time doing that i said well it's just you know i appreciate all forms of music you know i mean if you go to a concert you'll see a national artist a national artist do other people's music so i mean it's no different i I appreciate it and it's fun and if you can pull it off if anybody can pull off doing like a print show right you have to be good doing it yeah yeah that's right no faking yeah yeah you know so i mean i, I play guitar keys bass drums during the show we switch off and you know I, I i do everything how about some of the uh influential print songs for yourself growing up and made you to love his music i think uh, w- when i first heard some of his stuff it was the, the song called for you okay yeah or not for that's you it. not for you or, or Take me winners. I, I think it's for you, or I'm yours, or something like that. It was a it was That's a rock the song. First record, right? Yeah, the yeah, rock yeah. song. That extended. And song. when I heard that, I was like, I thought that wasn't even his song, but everything on the on the album is more like R and B. And then right. he got this last track that's just blown away rock and roll. Right. And then he did the same thing with Bambi. Yeah. On the other yeah. album, I was like, okay, this guy's got some rock in there. And yeah. I, and right. I, and I was a big fan of that, you know. And then I think when he did. Uh, Dirty Mind and Controversy. That's mm-hmm. when I started getting into the whole synthesizer and all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Some great records, yeah. Yeah, so that when I heard that, that's when I really got more deep into listening to his music. And uh we're going to talk a little later on about uh Julian's uh tour coming up with uh some heavyweights in the business amongst Julian himself and uh right now we're going to play something from Total Freedom. My pants are always thinking about you. <laughs> Everything's clean on this one? Yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's clean. <laughs> right, right, yeah. No, I mean, I know the song, but I'm just checking, double checking. That title came when I was sitting down with uh, some musicians that played with uh, with George Clinton. And, oh, okay. And we, were, and we were talking, and we were cracking jokes, and I, they were talking about my pants. And there was a, there were some girls in there, and I, I just kind of made a remark, and then it just became a song. <laughs> uh, there you go. Hey, I got to say what's up to Kevin Franklin of the What Up Funk Band, who's out there listening, and uh, go to whatupfunk.com. I know he's, he's a big what funkster. Up funk? What up, Funk? Yeah, you got to get together with those guys. Yeah, yeah, I sure do. All right, this is uh, Julian's Ride from Total Freedom. My pants are always thinking about you. All right, that is from Julian Ride, Total Freedom. Julian, it's been kind enough, and it's a true honor to have him here. I really appreciate it. Great guy, Julian Stefani, and uh, he's been working on new material. People can go to your respective websites, right, which are, again, Oh, yeah, you can go to uh, MySpace and catch me up on there. It's Julian's Ride. You can go to Facebook and look me up, Julian Stefani. And that last name is spelled S-T-E-F-O-N-I. You can catch me on there. And it's kind of weird because if you're on Facebook, you know, you got to scroll down and right. look for the the videos. I got st- I got a lot of 
I got some new songs on there on SoundCloud. If you scroll down and you'll see SoundCloud dot and you, you click on there, you can. I got about maybe ten songs posted that people can listen to and check out some new stuff. So, and then uh, JuliansRide dot com. You know, uh, we were talking about your time in Minneapolis, the home of you know the Minneapolis funk and all Prince and the time and all those guys. How how did you decide to move to Minneapolis and and tell us about the scene up there when you were there? Uh, for years, I was going back and forth, and then I got involved with this play called Awesome 80s Prom Play <clears throat> that hired me, and I was the music director there for a few years, and then that kept me up there, so I really got involved with the whole music scene and hanging right, out right. with a lot of Prince's musicians, you know, in the little spots like Jasmine's when it was open, uh, Bunkers, Fine Line, you know, Music Cafe. These cats would be hanging out all over the place, you know, and I would always see Jelly Bean and Sonny and Michael and kurt johnson and stuff and always run into these people and stuff and the music scene out there was very competitive mm -hmm. you know the, the musicians there they got a they got their foot inside every club it's, it was hard to get in there you know I, so i just right. took it upon myself to just start booking into the bigger venues and mm -hmm. that's how i started promoting concerts like what members of cameo and zap and stuff like that is this one up Prince was in L.A. around that time, right? No? He was in L.A. doing his musicology tour oh, okay, yeah. around that time. Right. Yeah, and then he came in in Minneapolis to do that three-show date called 777. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember was, that. Yeah. yeah, he introduced his cologne and um, the two shows he did over at Macy's. Right. Um, the show at the, uh, X, I think it was the XL Center. No, not the XL Center. The... Um, I can't remember the, the target. Yeah, the target, target center, yeah. and then uh, the after set party that went over at First Avenue. Right, right. So, and I was doing a big concert a week before that on Labor Day weekend at Truckadero's. So, so, so you're busy in the the big city, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin oh, Cities. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now in Portland, Oregon. So I took over yeah. Portland. I got there, and it was just like fresh territory. You know, nobody uh -huh. was doing the, the funk scene like that. You know, it was more like hip-hop and rock and alternative music and i just looked at it like wow this is a brand new scene so i, I started doing shows and a lot of people were like man you need to stay here you need to uh -huh. this is what portland <laughs> needs i was like i ended up yeah. i ended up moving out there you know just, how long is the flight from portland to new york area about four and a half hours oh okay yeah yeah it's a it, it's a cool flight portland is kind of like a mixture of both uh the city life and the mountain life you know right, it's got right. a lot of mountains and really cool scenes you got the ocean you can go skiing in the summer if you go two hours in the opposite direction. And it's got a really cool city life. You know? How, how's the public transportation? they have a subway or no? No subway, but uh -huh. they do have the um, they have the rails and they have buses and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. And no, no subways. Right, I don't think there's right. any subways. There's too many mountains, man. It'd be difficult. Yeah, yeah it'd be tough to, <laughs> to get the lines built there. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of crazy. But, yeah, Portland is really cool. It doesn't snow in the, in the, in, in the winter. It rains a lot. Yeah, right, right. And, uh. And that's what, got me, that's what got me out of Minneapolis. I was like, The okay, snow, right? The snow and Arctic 20 below zero weather, man. I just got like, okay. Yeah, but you go back every now and then, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it out there. Uh, we're going to hear Julian perform a little later in the program and, uh, of course, hear more music from Total Freedom. And uh, right now we're going to get into 14 Ways to Funk, right? Tell us about writing this one. 14 Ways to Funk. Oh, man, I was like, that song came about... I think I was writing that song in the dark in my uh -huh. studio at home, right. you know, and I was listening to the, <laughs> I was listening to the bass line, and I was like, I, I gotta have another way to funk this out. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and the song 14 Ways to Funk" came just, it just came out of the blue, and I was just like, all right. Yeah, you're into it. Yeah. Well, it's a little deeper, you know. The, the bass line, it's kind of, it's got more of a dark, creepy kind of bass groove to uh -huh. it, you know, with a little jazz guitar in the, in the background. So we got it going right now. This is Julian's Ride from Total Freedom right here at WVF in the Upper Room. And, uh, we're with you until 8 o'clock. Julian's going to perform a little later on. And, uh, you know, you've been talking about, and I'm excited about because you got a big tour that you guys are putting together and laying the groundwork for with uh, some other heavyweights, funksters, rocksters. Tell, uh, tell us about that. Oh, yeah. It's called a Funk Rock Revolution Tour featuring uh, myself, Julian's Ride, uh, Jesse Johnson from Morris Day in the Time. Charlie Singleton from Cameo and Jaira Harris from Slapback, who is also the younger brother of Jimmy Jam. And, uh, yeah, we decided to put together, you know, funk rock music back on on the scene. You know, right. it's, it, it has a, a very important place in music, 
history, you know, and we decided to just put a full blast right, right. And, and, and put it out there. You know, not to say that hip hop and all the other forms of music aren't doing well, but, you know, funk rock has always been, it, it has a special place, you know, and right. I think people tap into it, but then they just never really go all the way with it, you know, and it gets kind of buried with all these other titles, you know, yeah. you know so and all of this stuff. And, right, right. You know, so... Charlie Singleton, you know, he has this whole phantom get up, you know, uh -huh. really cos cosmic type of thing, you know. And Jesse's a little bit still on the on the suave side, you know, right. really clean cut, you know. Growing the afro pretty big. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. And then Jara, he has like this porcupine kind of afro with yeah. beads, you know, <laughs> beads on his beard. Yeah, I so noticed, yeah. And toxic wears, funk, right? Yeah, toxic funk, and he wears these golfing shorts. and <laughs> <laughs> Golfing shorts? Yeah. He oh, wears, really? Wow. Yeah, he got these shorts, you know, uh -huh. almost like it's a, it's a very... Where and his sisters are in the band, right? Uh, or they used to be. They they probably used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a whole new lineup, you know. And then you got me, you know. I'm right. just just doing the whole funk rock and roll thing, you know. Right, right. So it's gonna it's gonna bring, I th it's it's gonna be a, a it's gonna be very exciting to put this out there, you know, and just see the diversity between all of us as artists, you know, doing our thing. We're all talented, you know, musicians right. doing doing our thing, you know. We got. Uh, Guitar Center uh, helping us out with some sponsors, and we're going to be doing a lot of showcasing in their stores in the cities that we're going to be performing into. Right. So it's going to be exciting getting out on the road and traveling. You got some cities you guys are looking at? Yeah, we're going to be doing New York, California, uh, Atlanta, Chicago, Minneapolis, and Vegas so far. So we're going to be tying in some more cities as we go along. Right, right. Traveling on a bus or flying? You got uh, that. That all depends. You know, all, right. everybody lives in so many different places. You know? Yeah, right. Right. So we're we're gonna try to figure out how to how to make that work. For the most part, I think everybody would just be flying in. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we can get a funk bus, yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. <laughs> I, I think the time did that a few years back, and and they actually, I think Tori said they they like going on the bus for yeah. everybody loves the bus. It's, right. it's it's a little slower getting there, but you know you're more relaxed and you right. don't have to worry about the fast pace and the airlines and all that stuff, you right, know, baggage right. and all the hassles of people. You know, so I, mean, I, I always make the joke I would have to drive behind the P Funk tour bus because <laughs> it'd be a little too wild, <laughs> you know. But you know, those guys, I mean, they just get it. That's they know. That's probably all they know. That that kind of life. Yeah, you know, Charlie was like, "Hey, if we do this, he goes, we're gonna all need our own separate buses." Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's a lot of people on one bus. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, families and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, we gotta play some more music, and we'll, we'll get you situated, perform, and everything. Julian's gonna perform as well. Um, let me see. How about Johnny? Johnny's going to make you dance. Yeah. Yeah, that's an old one. Yeah. Johnny's going to make you dance. A little bit Minneapolis there. Yeah, yeah that, yeah. was my that was my little Minneapolis calling. Right, right. So uh, bring you back to some of those great times with the MPG, Kirk Johnson, and Julian's ride from Total Freedom right here on WBOF. Top of the hour. And uh, check it out. Julian's ride from Total Freedom. That is Julian's ride. Another great song. Johnny funked up version yeah it's the funk version on the first cd i had a rock version the rock version was slamming you know and i just right. I, I for some reason i was monkeying around in the studio and i came up with a an alternative version because everybody kept asking me don't you got like a different version of that song so uh -huh. so you're working on new material always working always working on the material right. the new cd is simply called j ride it'll be mm -hmm. out probably in about another month or two right and right I, I, I just called it j ride so people can actually get more familiar with the name Right of, of who I am and what I'm doing versus trying to be all psychedelic and trying to come up, come up with a you know really fancy title. I said no, I just call, I want to want to call it something really simple so people can actually really relate to what it is. So you mentioned the booklet. That's going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm going yeah. old school on this all one. Right. It's going to be a 50 page booklet. When you open it up, it's going to be like 150 pages of pictures and you know stories and all kind of cool stuff from the beginning of my career until present. It comes with. Um, uh, 17 track CD, and then mm -hmm. I want to include a DVD in there also, with film clips and interviews and all kind of great stuff. So people, yeah, can, I saw a really nice. Saw uh, it was a, a video of you and your band, mm -hmm. interviews behind the scenes and stuff yeah, like that. that yeah, yeah, that was nicely put together. Yeah, that's going to be included in there among uh, a lot of cousin, a lot of other cool stuff. You know, but I figure you know back in the day, you know when I was growing up, I used to love watching or getting a CD or an album when you had all this cool stuff featured in there. You know, right pictures or 
a any kind of cool graphics in there nowadays. You know, I think even even artists that have a budget for it, they're re they're being very limited with that mm -hmm. kind of information. Where it's just mainly you just get the music. Right, right. You so know, and if you're gonna pay fifteen bucks or, or you know eighteen twenty bucks for a CD, you know, I want to give the fans something a little bit more for their money. You know, and, and it kind of makes it more accessible to what I'm doing too, so they can be like wow, this is really cool. You get to see the visuals and you get to really get to see what I'm doing, you know, and you can see mm -hmm. what the music looks like and what the artist looks like, you know. Yeah, you are definitely a, a business person and, and you know, on, on this big tour, you got to keep everybody in check, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, a lot of them, some, sometimes they get a little, uh, they, 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 they don't really see the picture sometimes when they think I'm doing too much. And I remember back, like if you take the artist back in the 80s, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the, MTV artists that that came out on the scene, everything helped boost their career from you watching them. Right, right. You know, if you you would have never you would have never knew what a Prince concert was like unless you seen the videos. Right, yeah. You know, and that helped drives people to the uh, to the shows. You know, to see a a, a, CD, uh, a video like 1999 and stuff like mm -hmm. that with the full stage and the costumes and all that stuff. You know, yeah. versus not seeing it at all. You know. Yeah, so I remember it, speaking of the videos. You know seeing Prince 1999 Little Red Corvette and then seeing Prince on, on stage I'm like wow that brother's short you know and he's <laughs> going down the pole and everything and you know but the videos make this big makes it yeah, makes yeah. you look larger than life right you know? yeah and, you know speaking of that that was a great concept a lot of people don't realize that when he did 1999 Little Red Corvette Automatic yeah uh, Let's Pretend We're Married all those videos were done on the exact same stage so right all right. those videos were identical the only thing that was different was the music Right. I actually kind of preferred those videos, even though they're today they're kind of looking yeah. kind of older. But yeah. everybody looks at them like, well, you got to do story plots now. And yeah. I look at it like I, I look at it like this is what helps an artist. If if you're going to show your your video, and if I want to go to your show, I want to see what you look like. Right. When right. You're, when you're performing, and when I was looking at those videos, I noticed Prince's videos were all like that. You always seen yeah. him performing. Yeah, and who can you know the 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 dance and you know, you know a little. Prince style break dancing in Little Red Corvette. Yeah, never and, forget that. Yeah, all that kind of stuff was so cool, and that I, and I think that's what helped boosted his career. You know, as far as people really going to go see him live, to be like, wow, look at this guy. You know, right. So, right. and I think a lot of the artists nowadays don't focus on that as much. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're doing too much trying to make their videos look like movies. You know, yeah, yeah, which is not bad. I mean, it's it's right. still entertaining, but at the same token, I'm like, I, I prefer to go a little more old school. Yeah, you know. Now, how about you know for a Prince, your Rock City Prince tribute tour and playing Prince some Prince songs? What what's the toughest song you've had to tackle that, or maybe a song that Prince has recorded and you, and you try and you're saying, I maybe should leave this one alone. And um, I would none of his songs are really hard. I mean, mm -hmm. as far as hard to tackle, it's just a matter of just putting it into the show and seeing if it's going to work okay. in, in, in the show format of what right. we're doing. You know, I got some really good, talented musicians where we can, we we can take the song and play it identical to what he's doing, or just twist it and do it our own way, or mix it with other Prince songs. We'll take one song and mash it up to another. You know, like when we do Controversy, we'll mix it in with Irresistible Bitch, and then mm -hmm. go into Pussy Control and other stuff like that, and just right. kind of mix it up. But you know, and the audience knows it. I mean, they they react totally. Yeah. Like wow. Yeah. You know, totally unexpected, but I don't. I don't just, no, there's no, there's no Prince on that we can't do. How about uh, some of your favorite Prince shows? You have some memorable tours or shows that you've seen? And plus, you've got a great, great story. Actually, a, a running saga of you and Prince. Uh, and let's talk about that because, you know, you are Prince's nephew, right? <laughs> so so the fans say, yeah, this was back in the Hidden Run Tour back in 2000 where Prince was performing at the Riviera in Chicago and he called me up with a lot of fans and called me up on stage and said ladies and gentlemen this is my nephew and, you know uh -huh. he let me sing kiss right and a lot of people who didn't know who i was assumed that wow this must be prince's nephew he looks like him uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah right you know and i guess prince was having a ball with it because for like several concerts after that he kept using this little uh -huh. thing and, and his shows and it just started getting crazier and crazier you know and I'm walking around and people are asking me, who's your mother? You know, who's your father? Uh, what side yeah. of the family are you on? <laughs> oh, yeah, because they want to know the dirt. It was on Prince Org probably, the ne you know, within a couple hours, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of people, you know. It it, it, it was funny. It was yeah. great. It was great. I couldn't, I, I would go places and people would just, 
Panameter business cards from Universal Records and all uh-huh. these people like, hey, I need to get the prints. And they're, they're I remember waiting uh, in line to get Prince's autograph when he was signing autographs in Greenwich Village at Tower Records and going in. And right before we got in the door, this guy saying, can you please give him this tape, cassette tape? I said, no, I can't. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 he, he, I, like I was telling you earlier, we were in, in, uh, in Milwaukee and I sat down with him and he was listening to my uh cd for a while right right and then he took off with it you know yeah i was like <laughs> I was, i'm looking for my cd player i'm like <laughs> this guy's got my music <laughs> right right no but he was he he's he was really cool and he's he he's definitely in touch with what's going on like you know i'm sure he knows what what you're doing or you know he he, he knows what's happening around he the, knows the what's music going on a lot, of, yeah. a lot of people always ask me does, yeah. does he listen to what i'm doing i said i'm sure he's tapped into right. it you know soon at, at some place or another you know we we've actually had the uh, fedex copies of our radio show didn't have to but we're asked to fedex them up to, to paisley park they wanted to hear something I, it's funny because i had a prince uh a prince special you know we, we do it every once in a while mm-hmm. and uh i get an email from uh, Paisley Park or someone there and, and you know, didn't say who it was and it's like I was listening to your show and the song when you know he speeds it up the Camille style sounded a little off in the pitch you know can you send us a copy of the whole show and you know <laughs> we sent it up there and I'm thinking okay maybe Prince was hearing it it was and I asked the guy who I don't know if you know Derek Kelly from New York Power New York yes I know Derek was on that show I said Derek Listen to your copy. Do you notice anything strange in that song? He said, no, but I guess Prince the only one maybe who could tell his own music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe the recording was just slightly off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So interesting uh, stuff, and uh, Julian rides with us. Julian, uh, we're going to play something right now from Total Freedom, and uh, Julian will be back. He's going to perform. We'll talk more. We're with you till 8, and thanks for joining us. This is WVWF, the voice of Fairfield. We are here, 717. Julian Stefani is with us, and uh, Julian's ride. That is some great music from Total Freedom, and he is busy doing a lot of great things coming up. You're going to be performing a little later on, and, you know, you're out in Portland, Oregon. I'm in Portland, But this tour sounds really exciting because, you know, you grew up on the live funk and roll. Oh, yeah, Yeah. I I grew up on the old school funk rock and roll, man. So that's exactly what we're going to be bringing back to the scene. Right, right. And we're going to bring it back in a a monster way. You know, very powerful artist that's that's joining us on this lineup. Again, it's Jesse Johnson, Charlie Singleton from Cameo, uh, uh, Jara Harris from Slapback, and myself. 
Each yeah. having your own respective bands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna have our, you know, everybody's got their own band, their own look and sound and all that, but it still generates around the circle of funk rock music. You know, right, right. Everybody has a different twist of how they do it. You know, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy how this takes off. You know, it took right. off back in the '80s, like when you know you take bands like Parliament and Funkadelic and Bootsy did it. Yeah. You know, you had uh, um, like Cameo and the Barcades and. All those old school funk bands did it, and Prince did it with the time. You know, there was always like a little clique of funk bands that stuck together that really did what they what they did to bring it back out. And it's been years since I've seen anybody do that. You know, and 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 these guys that you spoke of, and, and yourself, when when you see them now, twenty, thirty years later, still bring it on stage. It's like there's certain like, okay, these guys can play, and they put some steps, and you know. You know, they still got it together like that. Yeah, it's not yeah. slumping on stage. Yeah, yeah, they still got it together. I mean, if you go see a Morris Day concert, these cats still do yeah. <laughs> the same show they've been doing for the last 25 years. But it's it's still a show. Right, I mean, you're right. Not, you're not going to be disappointed watching this, you know. And that's what we're going to be doing with the Funk Rock Revolution, where we're going to bring a, a real show to it. Right, right. You know, it's not going to be all full of gimmicks and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be very, very visual, but very, you know, where you you get the music you know, these are all, this is real music being played up there, real musicians. You know. be, be, besides your uh, your uncle, Prince. <laughs> Prince, if you're out there, your, your nephew's a great guy. I'm sure yeah. you know that. But uh, who, are, who are some musicians that you would you'd love to create with and that you haven't already? Oh, man, I would love to do stuff with Carlos Santana, um, Ernie Isley. Mm, yeah. You know, people like that i would love to do something with with george bootsy you know um yeah we were talking about musician pat bootsy's a brother just passed away yeah, yeah. catfish yeah 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 so, yeah you know i would love to do something before you know that happens to them you know god forbid but right i, I would love to share the stage and do something with them you know i've seen i seen lenny i was watching a, a youtube video and i seen lenny on stage with james brown i didn't even know it was out there you know oh like, really yeah, yeah i was like wow you know because lenny a lot of people look at lenny like they don't get him sometimes but you know he lenny's a, he fits in the category of what we're doing also you know right he, he, he yeah. he's a he's a funk rock and roller himself and he's been on stage with a lot of the best from the stones eric clapton and so many others including prince too you know right. so yeah you know i definitely want to share the stage with these cats and you know if i can ever even get the uh his royal badness you know to share the stage yeah <laughs> i mean i've been on stage and, and sang with him but not i never played with him but not like an official like that you're gonna be well i'm lefty there, so yeah. it's not like i can i can i'll have to do a little trick if i took one of his <laughs> guitars or anything but How, how'd you start playing lefty are you just natural i'm, le I'm naturally lefty? lefty and i started yeah. playing upside down until somebody told me hey you're upside down and i fixed the strings and uh-huh i just i just that was that was my thing. I, I tried to go right-handed. It was like crippled. Right. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it, man. <laughs> so tell us about your gear. I mean, that you use on the records and you know the guitar you got today. Uh, right now, I got my uh, Sapphire. I call it a Blue Lady. You know, uh -huh. it's a Fender Stratocaster. You know, I had it for about a good ten years. And um, as far as like my foot pedals and stuff, I use a variety. What I got here today in the studio is a old RP one by Digitech. Okay. Believe it or not, yeah. a lot of people look at this like, wow, that thing is old. But it, it produces, you know, the kind of sounds I need when I'm doing good funk, and crazy distortion sounds and stuff like that, you know. So you're thinking of, um, you were talking about when you guys do this tour, doing some stuff at guitar centers and clinics and stuff? Oh, yeah, we're going to be using guitar centers as, as a sponsor where each city we, we tour into, we're going to be doing like a two-hour showcase. And Jesse and Charlie and myself and, and Jair are going to go in there and just rock the socks out of right. these people you know yeah. just and just give them a really good earful of what this kind of music is you know a lot of people don't really get to hear it you know i mean it, it today's generation i mean you mentioned chili peppers and stuff yeah. like that they know that but then you know chili peppers are rooted back to you know what we're talking about here you know they had to listen to sounds like george clinton and funk and all right, that stuff right. you know yeah. to know where it came from you know and now chili pepper just kind of graduated into a whole nother thing of you know alternative uh, of, of music where it's not as as raw as it used to be it's more it seems to be like more commercial you know mm -hmm. a little bit right you know but 
I think there's a I think there's a home for this kind of music. You know? Yeah. And once people hear it and see it, they're I'm like be, times past that should have never left. I mean, yeah. we've been playing it all along, but you know, you think back, it's like what it, happened? Yeah, yeah, it's actually one of maybe the happiest forms of music where you can listen and right. see this, where it'd be like. Wow, nobody's ODing off of this stuff or shooting each other yeah, or, any, yeah, or any exactly. violence or any stuff. It's always one of those kind of music where you yeah. can think, I'm going to the club. I'm right. going to be dressed down to the tees. I want to have right. fun. I want to be dancing with a sexy girl, you know, and have yeah. fun and go home and make a baby or something. Right. You know? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Got to bring those days back. That's right. You, that's, you're that's doing fun. your best, right? That's, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So um, also... Uh, this this tour, you know, you spoke about uh, Charlie, Charlie Singleton, Tommy Jenkins. You've done actual tours with, with Tommy Jenkins, right? Yeah, we've done a lot of shows together with Charlie, Tommy, and Aaron from Cameo, where we did some shows in Minneapolis, uh, Streetport, Louisiana, you know. And, yeah, we, we did some stuff, you know. Right. And those are some fantastic cats to work with, you know. Yeah. Very, very funky, you know, a they, they, lot of energy on stage. Yeah, Aaron's great, too. So, that, yeah. that little guy is something else, yeah. you know, well, especially when we do the, the single life dance routine, you know. Oh, okay, he's yeah. Like, he's like a little grasshopper, just, <laughs> it's all over He wears the a skirt sometimes, right? Or a kilt? Yeah, or a, yeah it's a kilt with, yeah, these, a kilt with these black, I don't know, they're five-inch heel platform boots, right. you know, like wow. the kind of kiss wears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got a black mohawk with red tips on it and stuff and right it's cool i i love seeing performers that go out of the box and and really give you a visual you know right and cameo has been they've always been that way yeah crazy yeah. costumes and, and and stuff like that and that to me is like it, that's worth going to that's worth right. going to see a show yeah the, the whole package yeah right and the funk rock revolution is just it's going to bring that back you know when george used to have the spaceship and all of that stuff you don't see that no more i mean people used to say wow that was back in the day i remember that well i'm like well it's time to bring some of that back you yeah. know if not all of it you know Ho hopefully we can call donald trump or somebody and be like hey can you finance this <laughs> yeah that's right put, put it in put it in a 40 city tour we need we need yeah. a spaceship so we can all right right <laughs> that's right i'm sure sure he can buy you one yeah so we're gonna play right now this is the ride from julian's ride total freedom we'll come back and, and hear julian perform in those strings on that Fender Telecaster. Great, great oh, yeah. performance there. Julian's ride. That's Tearing cool. it up, man. Doing great. That's got to be a crowd pleaser, right? What's that? That that song. Oh, that song right there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Every time I play that song, everybody thinks I'm saying the other word. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. You know, you're, you're live, and they can't really see, <laughs> hear what you're saying so clearly, and I got people whispering in their, in their ears like, did he just say the F word? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That was, uh, that was legal and everything like that. <laughs> in the club, anything <laughs> goes, you know. Yeah, right, right. But that that song, I spring that song on people that never heard it, and by the time we're done, everybody's like, "Where can I get that?" You know. Right, right. Well, that's that's gotta be a great feeling as an artist. Oh yeah, yeah you know, yeah. to play something to a crowd and they never heard it before, and then you're done, and they're like, "Wow, I really, really like that." You know. Right. So that's, Julian's ride. Yeah. Now, now your own band with with J Ride. Um, tell us about how many pieces in the band. I got a five piece band. I just incorporated this uh, brand new female bass player. You know, oh, okay. And um, she's going to be joining the band pretty soon. She, my bass player now, who actually, it's kind of weird because everybody in the band is left-handed. So oh, I'm really? left-handed, my bass player is left-handed, wow. and she's left-handed. Uh -huh. So my bass player, Barry Hampton, is going to be uh, moving over to guitar. Right, and right. And she's going to be the sexy bass player taking over the, the funky J. Wright licks, you know. Right. See if she can handle it. <laughs> so she'll be on the, uh, the tour with Oh, yeah, she'll be on, yeah, she'll be yeah. on the tour with us, you know. Right. And so we're it's gonna, gonna be outstanding, things, yeah. Along, along with uh, another female keyboard player named uh, Bridget, who's mm -hmm. gonna be joining the band too. So audition. Everybody's from Portland. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Everybody's right. Out of, everybody's based out of Portland. Yeah. Yeah. How about how about this new record you you're working on? What's the, the J flavor Wright of it? C, yeah. The new J Wright CD is gonna be a highly explosive new journey into funk, rock, rhythm and blues, pop, rock, everything. Right, you know, right. It's, it's just going to be one journey after the next. You're never going to know what's going to be coming up next. You know, like sometimes you can hear a CD and you kind of just already know what tracks are going to sound like. You oh know? yeah, yeah. This is this is so out of the norm. You know, but in the pocket, you know, we're keeping mm -hmm. it. I'm keeping it funk rooted. You know, right. 
and very uh very visual you know so it'll be more more material for prince to steal from you as far as listening on your walkman and, yeah, and, and he, going he, off and I'm, listening to relaxation not I, stealing your music we're not saying that about he's prince. probably going to steal it i would that would, that would trip me out if i ever seen that now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm sure if i ever go to uh, if, I, if i go to a concert and i hear him playing it i'd be like right yeah he's got good taste yeah <laughs> my uncle my uncle loves my music right Man, I, there's so many crazy stories with that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. the, the, the people, uh, when I was in Minneapolis during the Hit and Run tour, and um, they had a journalism up there, a, journal, a journalist, actually, who was putting this in the newspapers, who insisted that right. it was actually his real nephew. Oh, and, really? And I yeah. was telling her, I was like, no, I'm really not his <laughs> nephew. But she said, you know, she put me up in a hotel and all this, uh -huh. and she flew me in from Chicago to Minneapolis. You just, can't turn just, that down. Yeah, I couldn't turn it down. And then when I got there, she was like, just so blown away that I was like, "You're right. you mean to tell me I did all this and you're not Prince?" <laughs> I said, "I can be your, I can be his nephew. If you really right, want me right, to?" Right, right, <laughs> right. She'll have to just convince the the company to business expense, right? Oh, she my was God. doing research. Yeah, and she yeah. worked and she worked for the company that actually sells the stories to like uh, Entertainment Tonight and, oh, and okay. stuff like that. Right. So she wanted to take this all the way to the bank. You know, she wanted to really, like do something with it. What's well, one of the craziest stories? I mean. Obviously, you bear resemblance to Prince, and you know. Uh, I, I think the craziest stories I've ever experienced is I was on my way from Chicago to New York. Uh huh. I was I, I was I was coming here to visit my mom, and I'm sitting there waiting at the gate, and this old guy is walking back and forth, and he's looking at me, and he goes, "Hey, are you?" And I'm just looking at him. So he he runs back. He comes back with a pen and paper. Uh huh. He goes, "I know you're Prince, right?" So. Can you give me an autograph? So I'm looking around, right? And I'm like, I don't know if I should do this. <laughs> so right. I kind of drew the little symbol thing in there. Right, and right. I left that as it was. So he leaves. He comes back with five other guys. Uh -huh. He goes, hey, these guys didn't believe that, you know, right. I got an autograph by Prince. So I'm signing more autographs. So 30 minutes go by. More people are coming by. Next thing you know, there's like an army of people surrounding me at the gate, right? Right, right. So here comes security, and they're like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just sitting there waiting on my plane. They're like, right. you, you're not supposed to be down here doing this. I'm like, so where am I supposed to be? They took me up to the VIP room, right? Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm sitting there with a bowl of fruit and wine <laughs> and champagne, a big right. recliner, all of this good stuff. And I, I get on the plane, and the, the stewardess, you know, asked me, can right. I sit in the back of the plane? Uh -huh. they're, they're, they're calling me Mr. Prince. Mr. Oh, Prince, yeah. you know, you don't, we don't want to bother you, but we don't want people to be running up to you and all this kind of stuff. That made it worse because everybody got in line to pretend to go into the, to the washroom. Right. And I made these little notes for autographs, you know. Right, right. <laughs> so, so I'm signing all these little notes and passing them out like candy. I'm like, all right, just take it. I don't even know who you are. Just Right. Know. And we land in New York, and um, I get out of the... Uh, out of, out of the plane but it took forever you know mm -hmm. we're way in the back and you got this big crowd screaming prince 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 <laughs> so i get down to the luggage and my mom's sitting there she's she's freaking out she goes, what's going on i'm like just pretend you're my assistant <laughs> so it was wow. great that that was yeah really, that, that, that definitely is an experience yeah oh yeah in the airport right. you know was they figured you know i was wearing just a regular black suit and glasses so they right. just and i wasn't talking you know so uh -huh. people were like that's gotta be him man. right 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 <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, Chicago to New York. You got you got a good story with that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah. that's a great one. That was funny. Yeah, Julian Stefani's here, and uh, Julian's ride will with you uh, for a few more minutes, and uh, we're gonna play something from Julian's ride right now. This is uh, stimulation. Stimulation. Yeah, it's my occupation. There it is, Julian's ride on WBOF. Right, that is Julian's ride. Stimulation. That's your occupation, right? That's right. Working funk. hard. That's right. Funk. And uh, Mosaic. yeah, you are getting ready the groundwork for a big, big tour with the Funk Rock yeah. Revolution Tour. That is right. that'll be something to be looking out for in 2011. You'll be hearing a lot about it in the next few months. We're just gonna do a lot of previews and a lot of you know, little excerpts here and there of what's to come from it and just just really blow it out, you know, back like they used to do in the 80s, you know, just give people a really good treat, you know, right. For funk up. rock music, we got to we got to bring it back like a heart attack. Yeah, you know? that's right. And we got to remind people of your websites because we're, we're a little pressed for time. But uh. that's right. If you go to MySpace, you can catch me on MySpace as Julian's Ride. And if you go to Facebook, it's Julian Stefani. And you can spell my last name S T E F O N I. 
And then uh, juliansride.com. Yeah. Check out for the updates on the, on the tour dates with your band. The tour dates, yeah. the new CD, the new Jay Wright CD that comes in a new book. And also, I'm selling. I'm selling a lot of things with this man. I got like uh, clocks that I'm selling. I got, oh, really? I got these clocks with really cool graphic pictures in there and stuff like that. The book. I got my own. Uh, it's, uh, it, it came as an experiment, but I decided to do it. I got a body oil called Jules. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, the ladies like it. Yeah. Hey, so, there you go. I got. I got to sell what works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got. You got to take care of the ladies. You come to the show. Everybody smells alike. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> we all smell like Jules. You know. Right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, got to thank you, brother, for coming by. Yeah, it's been yeah. a pleasure. Or long overdue. I've been trying to get I know, here for yeah. a long time. Yeah, we, we talked, we were talking, you know, on the phone, uh, on the show, and then, you know, t- of course, talking through the years and, you know, first of many in studio, hopefully. Yeah, the last time I missed, I got on a train. And the oh, yeah, train, yeah, that's interesting. The train yeah. said the next stop, there's some kind of right. thing going on with the police, and they didn't let the train move. I was right. like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> of but, all the yeah. days I, I get to yeah, come out yeah, here, yeah, I right, make right. it. So, so you got to come by. Uh, bring your band. Oh yeah, I'll bring, be, bring uh, the other cats that you're on tour with. Everybody's welcome. Yeah, uh, yeah, we would love to come back up in here, man. So Julian Stefani, Julian's ride, and uh, we'll see you next week here. WVF, the Up Room with Joe Kelly. In the meantime, if you missed out on this great performance and interview with Julian, you can uh, check us out at upperroomwithjoekelly.com. And uh, thank you, everybody. God bless. This is Julian's ride taking you out with Rock Show. All right, let's do it.